Stay with me as I go to the UFO Festival here in Exeter, New Hampshire. So I went to check out the UFO Festival in Exeter, New Hampshire. And I actually had a chance to interview the most famous alien abductee of all time, Travis Walton. You might not recognize the name, but back in the early 90s, there was a movie called Fire in the Sky based on his story. He's considered the most credible and probably a person with the most evidence of being abducted because he was abducted uh, with a group of people who saw it. Well, sort of saw it. You have to watch the movie. Anyway, point is, is he's kind of like a uh, blue collar fella that didn't want this kind of attention or fame. You know, he really wanted nothing to do with this when it started. So I find that much more credible than someone who's just trying to seek out attention. So when I interviewed him, I asked him about that question because these days he's just embraced it and rolled with it. You could actually check him out his own website and he speaks all around the world. So here's my lucky interview that I caught with him. The broadcast uh, episode was a paranormal witness. Uh, they did a 90 minute special, first time they ever went over there in one hour time slot. It's just about this case, it's an episode of paranormal witness called The Abduction. Yeah, it's a pretty famous case, man. Everybody knows who you are. That must be really weird for you to go well, no, there's been dozens of, uh, to be famous for. Wait, wait, hold everything. Someone has to interrupt my once-in-a-lifetime interview because they lost their cell phone. It's true. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> so you just a moment. If you see, I lost my phone. So if you see a phone this size anywhere, please let me know. How did that happen? I, 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 I honestly do not know. It's just gone. I hate it when that happens. Just letting you know. You see okay. it. So how did that? How do you feel about it that you kind of got thrust into being a celebrity? Well, I was uh, definitely reluctant, but you damned if you do and damned if you don't. When I hit out from the media, they said, "Oh, he must have something to hide. He doesn't want to talk to the media." And then when I start talking, about, oh, it's a publicity stunt. So you damned if you do and damned if you don't. So you just. Went with it and yeah. told your story. I found out that if I refused to do the interview, they'd go ahead with the story and just be more negative than it would have been. So, you know, to set the record straight, I got out there. How does your family feel about you coming out and doing stuff like this? Uh, my family and friends are all behind me. Anybody, anybody who knows me is very favorable. It's the people who don't know diddly about the story that are the most negative, you know. Thanks, Travis. Yeah. Well, you know, I was debating some skeptics and debunkers here a while back, and uh, I said, you know, you guys, the problem is you don't do your homework. All this stuff was uh, totally uh, refuted, and it's documented in my book. It's been out for years. And, and the guy said, well, I did do my homework. I read the, the skeptics book. <laughs> well, you know, that's one side of the story, but that's definitely not going to get you the full picture. The, the skeptics, uh, their favorite tactic is what they don't want you to know, they're not going to tell you. They very carefully cherry pick everything they can marshal that makes it look like it's against it, even if it's false. But um, and, uh, they're not interested in the truth. It's definitely a propaganda proposition for them. Thank you, Travis. There were also lots of speakers at the event, and you could buy a ticket and catch any of them. But I usually find the best way to actually meet these speakers is to just find them at the little book signing room. Usually they stuff them in some sort of area where you can go and buy their wares, and you can actually get a chance to just sit down and talk to them. You know, spend five bucks or ten bucks and buy an autograph or something. The festival itself is really cute. Exeter is a small town, and they really go all out on this festival. I mean, the town's lit up with aliens everywhere you look. And if you really have a keen eye, you can catch some men in black roaming around the town. I wonder what they're up to. 
I also had a chance to find some of the local UFO groups and meet those people, and they were really nice. Everybody at this festival was super, super nice. You would think they're like crazy weird, but they're not. They were really nice. And of course, there's lots of great swag. I have wanted this t-shirt, but it was from a year's past, but I did pick up this cool t-shirt from this year. I love the old car. It's good artwork. What was weird, though, is I accidentally left the camera on, and there was this strange mark. You know, I didn't realize the camera was on, and then when I went back and looked at this footage, I don't know if this is just an in-camera feature or some strange alien message. Anyway, so they have a crash site for kids, which is pretty fun and a cute idea. So in the crash site area, there are other vendors and some stuff for kids to do, some arts and crafts projects. And it's a cool idea to bring kids into the festival. Of course, these alien balloons were everywhere, and they're awesome. They just set them up, so they're stalking you. Pretty neat. And here's a crash site. And the idea is kids go through and search the crash site, and they can try to rebuild artifacts. Keeps them busy. Lots of craft stuff. I forgot to mention that Exeter, New Hampshire is a hotspot for UFO activity since the 1960s. And you can go on a tour to see the hot spots in town. And a couple of them are really famous because the town was one of the very first places in modern days to report a UFO sighting. In the 60s, there were lots of UFO sightings all around town. And one got very famous and became the incident. Now here I took the tour and we went past Shaw's Hill, which... UFOs were seen at but more importantly is what's known as the Exeter incident and you gotta remember this was a time before people were really coming out and talking about UFOs so it was a big deal in UFOlogy history the incident was supposed to be suppressed but someone accidentally got out the information to the press and it became an incident all over the country. Here's the actual spot of the Exeter incident, and I'm gonna let the tour guide tell you a little more about that. So I was sure she was okay to drive, but I thought she was a coop, and they drove off. So he came back out to the site with Norman, uh, right out here, and he witnessed it as well. Um, Are you Norman? A little bit after Officer Hunt showed up, he, he witnessed it as well. So what happened, you have to remember, for, for quite a few years ago, and the scenery has changed quite a bit. If you look out, if you look out from the right, this is where the object first came out once they were back with the officer. Um, there was a, a barn over here that you could see the light from this craft reflecting off the side of it. Um, a lot of the reports from this era involve power lines, and these crafts are seen around power lines. You can't see it from here, but if you look to the very back of the fence, beyond the tree line, the power lines run up to a swampy area. Um, if you do go out there, get permission. I'm not telling anybody to actually go out there. But if you do have the chance to go out there, um, there is a low depression in the land, just the natural landscape. Yeah, check out this cool t-shirt. See, you too could get one of those cool t-shirts if you went to the Exeter UFO Festival. Nah, seriously, it was a lot of fun. If you find yourself out there, definitely go. As far as myself, obviously I believe in aliens and unseen forces and I think we only see such a little tiny slice of reality and what's out there. So I'd love to know your opinion and comments. Do you believe in aliens? Do you believe in other forces? What do you believe? Let's talk. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Also give this a thumbs up, a like, a share, or if you have something to add, remember to comment below. Thanks. Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. 
Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over and sign up at terranlupo.com and all that's free.